Good evening, I'm David Brown and welcome to the Northern Sun Experience and congratulations are in order this week for everyone at MSU Moorhead. The Dragons men's and women's basketball teams have at least clinched a share of their respective regular season titles. MSU's men have won five games in a row, including a pair of victories over Bemidji State and Minnesota Crooks in this past weekend. The Dragons sit at 17 and three in the conference, 22 and four overall. Coupled with a Northern State loss this weekend, MSU Moorhead is the North Division champion, or at least the co-champion, as well as the top seed heading into the conference tournament next Wednesday. MSU Moorhead's women, meanwhile, have won four in a row and are 18-2 in conference play, 21-3 overall. The Dragons are a full three games clear of every other NSIC team and will also be the top seed once the conference tournament starts. And when we come back, we'll break down MSU Moorhead's regular season conference titles with our analyst Jordan Dalton. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and Dakota Land Honda. And welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience, joined once again by former Augustana point guard Jordan Dalton to break down all things NSIC hoops. Jordan will start on the women's side, where MSU Moorhead officially clinched the regular season conference championship. They got a pair of victories over Minnesota Crookston and Bemidji State. The Dragons have won four in a row, seem to have some momentum. So how do they keep that up for this final regular season weekend when legitimately they don't have anything record-wise to play for, but you think they have a lot more to play for? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first you want to say congrats to Coach Carla Nelson and her squad for, for bringing on the first conference title in over 10 years, but we were talking about it pre or you know prior to the show. They still have a chance to host the regional tournament, and, and so when you have that opportunity to host the regional, to have your fans behind you, you want to take full advantage. Um, not to mention, they just want to continue to play well. You know, you don't want to have any lows when you get to the end of the season. You know, they've been a great defensive team. I think in the last seven games, no team has scored more than 70 points on them. So they're a great physical, you know, just really tough, imposing team on the defensive end. So you want to keep that going because this is the part of the year where you want to be playing your best basketball. You don't want to take any steps back um, and don't really, really, really want to develop any bad habits. So just the way the style they play, you know, I mean, again, this is a great accomplishment, obviously, but I'm sure they're looking for a lot more. They're at St. Cloud State and at Minnesota Duluth this weekend. Minnesota State Moorhead came out in the latest WBCA poll as 12th overall. Could put them in that top two for that Central Region hosting. So certainly a lot to play for regardless of what happens in the conference tournament coming up. Well, don't look now, but your alma mater, Augustana, their women are heating up. The Vikings have won four in a row, got a big overtime win at Sioux Falls Friday. Augie started the weekend fourth in the South Division. And to show you how close it is, now they're in first place <laughs> in the division. So in a neck and neck race like that, what's setting Augustana apart? Yeah, I mean, typically, you would say the three-point shot. You know, they've attempted over 700 three-pointers this season. Uh, but this weekend, they really shot the ball tough from the three-point line, only, you know, a combined 25% from three-point line. Uh, I really th just think it's their pace. You know, teams aren't comfortable playing at the pace that Augie plays at. You know, in both games this past weekend, they shot over 70 times in the offensive end. And so when teams try to play at their same tempo, they typically rush shots or make uncut characteristic turnovers. And then in the end of the game, they're just gassed. You know, teams aren't used to playing that fast play pace, that up and down tempo. So I I really think their tempo is what's really pushing them over the edge even in games that they don't shoot well and so it'd be a great opportunity for them to close out obviously they got you know Winona State coming in Friday night which you mentioned you know a team that they're tied for for the lead in the South Division with and so that would be huge going into the conference tournament to get that win and uh, seal up the, the South Division. You mentioned the pace. Augustana still leads the conference in scoring in there in our second in margin. And Logan O'Farrell was recently named the player of the week in the South Division. Well, Concordia St. Paul had a 10-game winning streak, but that came to a screeching halt. They lost a tough battle with nationally ranked Winona State on Friday. And then they lost at Upper Iowa on Saturday, who was just 3-20 and coming in, just 4-20 and now on the year overall. So how can the Golden Bears maybe get some of that momentum back? Yeah, we talk about it all the time, how tough it is to go on the road and get two road wins in this conference. And I honestly think the Golden Bears, they were just gassed on Saturday night after a hard-fought battle on Friday. Um, and so I really think for them to get back to their winning ways, they have to establish Caitlin Russell down on the block. You know, she's one of the best post players in the conference. She's she's great at scoring on her own, but more importantly, she draws double teams. And so when you give her touches down on the block, 
teams have to make a decision. Are they going to single cover her and just take their chances uh, as far as getting stops on a consistent basis? Or are they going to send double teams, which open up other shots on the perimeter for her teammates? And so I really think the more you establish that, that low post presence, it just makes the game so much easier uh, for them on the offensive end. And, and so, again, in order for them to get back to where they want to, they have to be so much more efficient on the offensive end. And I really think it starts down low with Russell. They got a tough game on Friday at, or excuse me, at hosting Sioux Falls, and they host SMSU to close out the regular season. Well, a team that's been steady all season long, but recently making some headway is Wayne State. The Wildcats, like the Dragons and Vikings before them, have won four games in a row. They're now tied for third in the South Division. So why are the Wildcats playing so well? Yeah, well, you look at it, they have such an aggressive nature on the defensive end. You know, right now they're averaging over 10 steals a game, uh, which obviously leads to transition buckets and easy buckets on the offensive end. But what it also does is it, it's disruptive for offenses when they're not necessarily worried about running their sets. They're just worried about not turning the basketball over. And, and so it really throws teams off as far as rhythm goes on the offensive end. And then if you're able to get past that pressure defense on the perimeter, they're also averaging five over five blocks a game uh, in the painted area. So you, you just – that, and again, that's another igniter on their transition uh, baskets on, on, on the offensive end. And so that combination of just that aggressive style of play, which is helping their offense lead, or their defense lead to easy buckets on the offensive end, I think really just has the Wildcats in a great rhythm right now. And they're going to host Upper Iowa and Winona State this weekend. Well, we've discussed how crazy the South Division is. <laughs> Here's a peek at the standings as of this week. Five teams, Augustana, Winona State, Wayne State, Sioux Falls, Concordia, St. Paul, all within two games of each other for the final weekend of regular season play. So usually your crystal ball a little bit look at the weekend schedule which of those five teams is going to end up on top of the division yeah i would have to go with the augie advantage right <laughs> i think augie's going to be able to close out the the conference season with two games against two teams they've already beat by double digits uh, we, we talked about winona state coming in on friday so uh winona state's one of the best defensive teams in the conference augie's one of the fastest paced teams on the offensive end so it'll be a test and, and battle of wills and i really think augie's going to be able to close it out and talk about big momentum going into the conference season that would be a great way uh to, to end the season should be fun this weekend. Well, when we come back, Jordan will break down MSU Moorhead's conference championship on the men's side. And welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. Once again, joined by Jordan Dalton. We're going to talk men's hoops now. Like the women, MSU Moorhead's men also clinched the regular season conference championship, at least a share of it right now. So like their female counterparts, how do the Dragons stay motivated into this final regular season weekend? Because obviously they have a share of the title, but they want the outright title. Absolutely. And again, hats off to the Dragons for clinching at least a share of the title for the fourth straight season. You know, that shows really the, the depth and the, the foundation of a great basketball program. So congrats to coach Chad Walthall um, and his program. Uh, but I think for, for the Dragons to continue, again, they're, they're the best offense in the conference. You know, they have such dynamic players on the offensive end who can get shots both for themselves and teammates. I don't see any of that changing. Again, you know, when you play, when you have a great offense, it's all about rhythm and timing, right? And, and so you want to continue to have that type of confidence, that type of rhythm as you go into the conference season. We talked about it. Once you hit regionals, you know, it's a, it's a one-game tournament. You know, you lose and you go home. And so they don't want to develop any bad habits. They want that rhythm to continue on on the offensive end. And I don't see them changing up anything this uh, this upcoming weekend. You mentioned the prolific offense. They're averaging more than 90 points a game. And by the way, with the Moorhead Dragon women and men clinching a at least a share of the conference title. First time two teams on both the men's and women's side have claimed those since Southwest Minnesota State back in the year 2001. So congrats <laughs> all around to MSU Moorhead. Well, Augustana got a big weekend from Jordan Spencer, NSIC South Division Player of the Week. He helped him to a big road win at Sioux Falls, and then 39 points at Southwest Minnesota State. The Vikings have won six of their past seven games, so are they peaking right now? Yeah, talk about resiliency. You know, uh, Spencer went three for 11 Friday night against uh, University of Sioux Falls and a bounce back with your career high. Not too bad of a bounce back performance but uh, I do think they're they're just winning close games we talked about it all season long even when they were losing games early in the season it was typically by five points or less you know so they were one or two possessions away from being a really really good team and right now I just think they're finding ways to win some of those close games uh, you know this isn't their your traditional Augie team where they don't have a ton of low post scoring but what they do have is great shooters from the outside uh, you know, between Spencer Busack and, or Busack and um, Stephen Shaver, all of those guys have hit over 43 pointers this season. And so they have to hit shots consistently from the outside to make up for that lack of uh, low post presence. And right now, I think Augie's just been shooting the basketball really well, uh, which in turn allows them to set their defense on the, on the other end. And so I do think they're playing some of their best basketball games right now. But I also just think they're finding ways to win close games and moving into the tournament season. That's what you're going to have to do. 
Speaking of close games, Augustana has Upper Iowa coming up on Saturday in the final regular season game. Upper Iowa beat Augustana on a last second three pointer <laughs> earlier this season. Meanwhile, in, a, uh, in opposition to Augustana, Sioux Falls has reversed course. The Cougars had a six game winning streak earlier this year. Now they're on a six game losing streak. And no matter what happens this weekend, they're going to have to go on the road in round one of the conference tournament. So how can the Cougars get some of that mojo back? Well, it's a heartbreaker uh, loss against Uni or Augustana University on Friday night. Mac Johnson had a great shot at the end to tie it up. Just didn't fall. But I really think for, for the Cougars, it all starts on the defensive end. You know, they are the best defense in the conference. But in their last seven games, uh, or excuse me, in five of the last six games, they've given up 80 points or more uh, in, the, in that six-game losing streak. And so you just can't give up 80 points consistently and expect to win basketball games. You know, they were built on earlier this season when they were winning games switching up defenses, throwing teams off a of rhythm, you know, looking, having different looks, whether it's zone man or a hybrid or combination or kind of a junk defense. And right now, they just haven't been able to get stops consistently. Teams have been able to live in the paint and really get easy shots and finish those easy shots in the, in the painted area. So I think for the Cougars to get back on track, they're going to have to lock up on the defensive end. They're going to have to start causing some chaos and some confusion. They play best when, for lack of a better term, games are ugly, right? So they want to, they, they don't want to flow. They don't want to get rhythm to the game. They want to make the game ugly, and I think they have to get back to, uh, to that, that style of play if they want to get back to winning basketball games. It's such a cliche about valuing the ball and valuing possessions, but USF in games decided by two points of less, they're 0 for 7. <laughs> so it shows they've been a little bit snake bitten, but obviously they'll still need to turn things around. Well, St. Cloud State had a mixed bag this weekend. 20-point loss at Mary, who's below 500, and then they needed overtime to beat Minot State. They're in the pack for a number two seed in the North Division, so can the Huskies get things going here? Yeah, well, and when you look at the Huskies, they're a tough team to figure out uh, mainly just because they're so top heavy you know they rely on Gage Davis for a lot on the offensive end and so I, I think you know I mean he's obviously one of the most talented offensive players that we have in the NSIC but too often I think his teammates just kind of watch him play and wait for him to make great plays and so that's tough when that type of responsibility night in and night out is your team counting on you to get 30 35 40 points a game <laughs> to have a shot to win games um, but Kind of sound like a broken record, but they're going to have to play some defense. You know, they've given up, they gave up 80 points both time, both games this weekend. They're just not going to be able to overcome that type of deficit on the offensive end um, on a nightly basis. And they got a tough weekend to wrap things up against Northern State and MSU Moorhead. Well, we asked it on the women's side, on the men's side, South Division also up for grabs. Upper Iowa, SMSU tied at 15 and 5. Augie won back. Minnesota State with an outside shot. So who emerges as the South Division champ on the men's side? Yeah, I'd go with Southwest Minnesota State. You know, they've been at the top of the conference all season. They're a team that's coached great by Coach Bigler. Um, and they just play hard. And so you'd like to see that consistency pays off. Uh, so I'll roll with the Mustangs this weekend. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, Jordan. Well, when we come back, our Under the Northern Sun feature showcases the University of Mary. And welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience, where it's time to name another member to the NSIC's 25th anniversary team. And this edition made his biggest mark on the conference less than a year ago. Congrats to former Augustana basketball star Daniel Jansen. In addition to leading the Vikings to their first national championship last season, he left the school as its all-time leading scorer. Jansen is also the NSIC's career scoring leader, along with being a two-time conference and central region player of the year. Jansen is currently playing basketball overseas in Belgium. Well, grappling with life after sports can be difficult for some NSIC athletes, but a former UMary wrestler is now in the business of helping others get up after a career of pinning people down. Here's tonight's Under the Northern Sun feature showcasing Trevor Johnson. Good to see you up and about. Yeah. Ever since graduating from the University of Mary, this has been the scene for Trevor Johnson, former wrestler and now a nurse in the ER at Sanford Health in Bismarck. But let's go back to before scrubs became his work uniform. When I was four years old, my dad wrestled for Napoleon and then BJC back in the day and then you married for two years as well. So um, he started my brother and I out when we were four and five years old. What started as just a young kid in the map pack continued throughout high school at Bismarck, the most tradition rich program in the state, a program the Johnson family played a part of building. It was kind of cool for my brother and I because our head coach at Bismarck High was my dad's head coach at BJC when he was in college, Jeff Schumacher. After having to transfer to Century in seventh grade where his brother Tyler was a state place winner, the brothers went back to BHS to continue the tradition. And we transferred to Bismarck High just because 
that was where my uncle went to high school and we've been wrestling in Matt Pack for a, a long time in the Bismarck High Room and it was a place where we knew we wanted to go wrestle for Jeff and, and Scott Nolan. It was, there's no way I would have wrestled in college if I wasn't at Bismarck High, so. Trevor was a two-time state champion and he placed every year, but after high school came college. I was recruited very lightly to wrestle in college. My brother was at NDSU um, and their assistant coach did pretty much all the recruiting there at that time and he came and sat down with me in my house before football practice, um, twice actually. Um, so I decided to go to NDSU when I was a true freshman. After a redshirt season, Trevor realized that wrestling at a Division I level wasn't for him, and that's when he transferred to the University of Mary. I think why you marry, because initially, because it was home, and you know, I needed some financial support. I wasn't gonna be able to do stuff on my own at that point. Um, and I didn't have any, didn't really have a religious background either, so that kind of flourished. I thought about not even wrestling when I came back, just because I was so burnt out from NDSU. Um, and I came back and talked to um, Coach Brogan and asked if there was any scholarship opportunities, if they had any money left for scholarships. And he said they had some, and I said, well, I suppose I'll you know, I might as well, I, it's, it's a way to help me out with tuition and... Once Trevor started competing for the Marauders, his success was instant. Johnson was a Division II All-American. But it's not easy taking part in this sport and studying in the nursing program. Well, my mom's been a nurse for uh, 20, over 20 years, almost 20 years. And it was, and this is a, you know, when you get into a program, you say, why did you when you're in the first part of a, any kind of program for a bachelor degree, they ask you why, you know, why'd you choose nursing? And at first, I was honest with the teachers. I said it because it's a, a lot of job security. It's easy to get a job outside of college, and you know, who doesn't? There's not a lot of people that don't have college loans after four years. What started out as job security turned into a passion worth working for. It's not a very easy program to be in when you're in athletics either because it's very um, extensive and there's a lot of clinicals, a lot of coursework and you're busy all week long every week so um, I don't know, it was just, it was, it got pretty tough at times but I was also lucky to have a coach to, that kind of gave me some leeway because it was, if I had to choose wrestling or nursing at that point, I would have chosen nursing. You can't wrestle forever. Since graduating from the University of Mary, Trevor works full-time at Sanford in the ER and misses wrestling more than ever. Every day. <laughs> um, that's also kind of a loaded question because um, I still volunteer coach at UMary and when I was a senior, um, after I graduated the coach, we had a new coach my senior year. And he asked if I wanted to coach. I said I would love to, but I obviously got a job here and I wanted to get a lot of experience so I just told him I would volunteer and get out there as much as I can. Johnson continues to help with as much as he can whether it's in the emergency room or on the wrestling mat. When we come back a recap of a couple of conference championships this past weekend in swimming and diving as well as indoor track and field. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. And while the calendar indicates it's February, swimming took center stage last week in the NSIC. The Conference Swimming and Diving Championships took place in Rochester, Minnesota. Swimming and diving came back as an affiliated NSIC sport this season after a two year absence. And despite the wait, St. Cloud State picked up right where it left off. The Huskies won their third team championship in three attempts. SCSU also won the 2013 and 2014 Swimming and Diving Championships. Overall, 14 new conference records were set over the course of the 22 events. Here are the full team results. St. Cloud State wins with 1,069 points, more than 200 points ahead of second place Minnesota State. MSU Moorhead finishes third, followed by Northern State, Augustana, Sioux Falls, and U Mary. 
Individual honors went to Northern State's Hannah Castigar, who was named Swimmer of the Year as well as Swimmer of the Meet, accumulating 80 total points. The conference's Diver of the Year is St. Cloud State's Britton Thompson, while the Diver of the Meet is Minnesota State's J.C. Klein, who amassed 37 points. Meanwhile, over in Mankato, the NSIC Indoor Track and Field Multi-Event Championships took place, and for the second year in a row, Augustina's Olivia Montez-Brown took home the gold in the pentathlon. The Vikings sophomore won the 60-meter hurdles and the long jump, while finishing in the top three in the high jump and the shot put. Afterwards, Montez Brown was humble about winning back-to-back -back titles. Like, I just forget those things. Like, I love to run, so I just go out there and do it for the fun of it and show that my hard work has, like, paid off. So the fact that I've won it again, it's, I think it's a nice feeling for me and for the team and my coaches. Brown finishes with 3,838 points, more than 250 points, out of second place Wakpor Ahovaja of Concordia St. Paul. The Golden Bears' Callie Burney is third, followed by St. Cloud State's Natalie Gottschalk and Minnesota State's Carolyn Hackle. Meanwhile, also in Mankato, the men's heptathlon crowned a champion. Wayne State's Robert Sullivan took home the gold, finishing first in the shot put and second in the long jump. The sophomore Wildcat scored 5,141 points, finishing 59 points ahead of second place Teddy Frid of Sioux Falls. Sullivan's teammate Derek Lom finishes in third, you marry Sven Dunkel is fourth, and Minnesota State's Jack Curtis is fifth. The NSIC Indoor Track and Field Championships continue with individual events on February 24th and 25th in Mankato. Once again, a thank you to all of our NSIC member schools. As a reminder, next week's show will air one day earlier on Wednesday, February 22nd at 5 p.m., where we'll preview the entire NSIC Conference Basketball Tournament. And remember, Midco Sports Network is your tournament headquarters with the semifinals and championships on February 27th and 28th. We'll see you next week for yet another Northern Sun Experience.